The video I just posted yesterday talked about how Apple's future ARM-based Macs will no longer come with discrete GPUs, with evidence coming from Apple's own developer tutorial videos. But I keep seeing countless comments saying that gaming is now officially dead on the Mac, with reasons ranging from the new architecture not being able to compete in the gaming segment, and Apple Silicon not having enough graphics power without a discrete GPU, and a lot of people saying that game developers now have no reason to make games for Mac anymore. But I've been digging through all of Apple's developer videos, and I've found something that Apple has never done before that will greatly encourage AAA game developers to make games for the Mac. So I'm here to tell you that Apple Silicon is actually the birth of gaming on the Mac, but before we get into it, be sure to check out our new premium Apple product t-shirt down below this video. No, Apple Silicon Macs are not going to support Windows 10 using Boot Camp, and they're not going to support high-end NVIDIA or AMD discrete graphics. Apple will instead have a custom ARM-based CPU and GPU built into one system on a chip or SOC basically one big chip. Now, if you find it hard to believe that they can achieve enough power without a dedicated GPU, then you should definitely watch yesterday's video when this video is over. But the most important thing that people don't realize is that Sony's upcoming PlayStation 5 and Microsoft's upcoming Xbox Series X do not have discrete GPUs either. Both the CPU and the GPU are on one main chip on both of the most popular gaming consoles ever. So if high-end game console makers are switching to this type of technology, why can't Apple? And even if Apple manages to pull off great performance, there's still the problem of why game developers will finally decide to bring their games to the Mac. And here's what I found deep in one of those Apple developer videos. For the first time ever, Apple is opening up their metal developer tools to be used on Windows 10 machines. And Apple did this with gaming in mind. This means that large mainstream game studios and developers that use Windows machines to create their games will finally have access to create games for iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and the Mac using their current Windows machines. Previously, a game production team had to invest in Apple Mac computers for their entire team in order to create games for Mac OS. And because of that, there are services like Mac Stadium, which allow you to rent a Mac from a server farm. But that can get seriously expensive. But now, Apple literally created a Windows installer for their metal tools, specifically for creating apps and games for Apple Silicon. That little piece of info came out of a 36 minute long video that Apple created, which talks about how to create GPU binaries with metal, which is needed for gaming. And that long video includes a section talking about how Epic Games was able to optimize Fortnite using metal for the Mac. Not only that, but they have multiple tutorial videos focused on helping developers bring their apps and games to Apple Silicon Macs. And the absolute best part about these upcoming ARM-based Macs is that they will natively be able to run any iOS or iPad app. So every single game or app that you have on your iPhone or iPad right now will work on Apple Silicon on day one. Just listen to this. In macOS Big Sur, we are leveraging this Mac Catalyst infrastructure to enable running your existing iOS apps as is on Apple Silicon-based Macs. Here, as is really means as is. We enable the user on the Mac to purchase or download through the Mac App Store the application you've already made available on the iOS App Store. It is the exact same binary. Now you might be wondering, how the heck will my touch-based app or game work on a Mac that doesn't have a touchscreen display? Well, here's the answer from that same video. iOS is built around a direct, multi-touch interaction model. But macOS is built around an indirect, cursor-based interaction model. The infrastructure automatically maps many multi-touch gestures. And on the iPad side, Apple is finally adding keyboard and mouse support for iPad games, which is a really big deal. 
So if a game developer adds that functionality, then it'll automatically be supported on Apple Silicon Macs as well. And to make it even better, check out this quote from an Apple support document. If your project supports iOS or tvOS, it also supports Apple family GPUs. So basically, if a game developer creates a game just one time using Metal for Apple Silicon, that game will instantly become available on the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple TV, and the Mac all at the same time and they can now use Windows to create it for the first time ever. Basically, it is now about a thousand times more worth it to create a game for the Mac than ever before, since it'll also be instantly available on every other Apple device. The way I think it'll work is that each device just has different ways of controlling the game. iPhones can use touch or game controllers, iPads can use touch, a game controller, and now finally a keyboard and mouse. The Apple TV can use a game controller, and the Mac can use either a game controller or keyboard and mouse. And what all of those have in common is a game controller. So the rumors of Apple developing one of their own could actually be true, since it makes sense for Apple to create their own standard game controller to use across all of the Apple platforms. So I'd say that all of this put together is more than enough to incentivize AAA game developers to finally bring their games to Apple devices, thanks to it being much easier now that they can do it using Windows, and they only need to do everything once for all Apple devices. Now you could complain that the switch to the new ARM-based Macs means that support for traditional PC games is going away, and it is, since Boot Camp will no longer be available and they're ditching Intel processors. However, it's been known that the PC gaming and console gaming portions of the market have been slowly declining, while smartphone and tablet gaming has been growing very quickly. And if you look at this chart, the trend is expected to continue, with 59% of the gaming market being made up of mobile gaming by 2021. And this is why we're starting to see a massive shift of high-end AAA game developers bringing their games to mobile devices. Epic Games brought Fortnite to mobile and made $1 billion in revenue in two years with just the mobile side of their game. Blizzard brought Hearthstone to mobile, and now the mobile version is making more profit than the PC version. Roblox Mobile just hit $1.5 billion in lifetime revenue. Nintendo brought Pokemon Go to mobile devices, and now it's made over $3.6 billion in revenue. And since Activision released Call of Duty Mobile less than a year ago, it's been downloaded more than 250 million times. For reference, that's more than the unit sales of every non-mobile Call of Duty game that they've made since 2007 combined. And Activision announced at their last earnings call that mobile is now the company's leading platform. And looking into the future, Epic Games is currently working on bringing League of Legends to mobile. Blizzard is currently working on bringing Diablo to mobile, Apex Legends is coming, Path of Exile is coming, and even Bethesda's Elder Scrolls Blades recently launched on mobile. The point I'm trying to make is that AAA game developers are starting to bring their titles to mobile devices because they see it as the future of gaming, despite the hardcore PC and console gaming fans which hate mobile gaming. And every single one of those popular iOS and iPad games that I mentioned will also be able to run on Apple Silicon Macs on day one. And since ARM-based chips are getting so powerful, game developers are going to be able to bring incredible games with high-quality graphics to the Mac. And yes, ray tracing is supported on Apple Silicon. Apple even made a developer video at last year's WWDC event, so this is old news. Basically, the entire point of this video is that Apple switching to their own custom ARM-based chips does not mean the end of gaming on the Mac. It's actually closer to the birth of gaming on the Mac. Now, as far as when we should expect those Apple Silicon Macs, I think Apple will have an online event this October where they will release the rumored 24-inch iMac, probably a new MacBook Air, and a new Apple TV 
all powered by new ARM-based chips. So hopefully you learned something new from this video, and if you did, go ahead and tap the like button and click the circle above to subscribe. And be sure to check out our merch right below this video, and definitely check out the video I made yesterday right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.